SpaceX is steadily moving towards Starship Flight 12, with both the ship and booster now assembled and entering the final stretch before pre-launch ground testing. On the surface, progress looks fast, but recent activity around the Flight 12 upper stage, Ship 39, suggests SpaceX is deliberately slowing down to avoid repeating earlier failures. Ship 39 was fully stacked back in November, and final hardware installations, including the updated composite overwrapped pressure vessels, or COPVs, were completed roughly a week ago, which would put the vehicle on a near-term path toward testing. Instead, scaffolding has now been erected around large sections of the vehicle. Scaffolding at this stage is a strong indicator that teams are preparing to remove and reinstall heat shield tiles, particularly around structural interfaces and high-load regions. While scaffolding can support other tasks, the location strongly suggests tile removal to enable underlying structural modifications. Tile removal this late in the flow is uncommon and typically points to required structural changes rather than routine work. The timing aligns with recent testing at Massey's, where SpaceX ran a dedicated validation campaign using Ship Test Tank 18 to qualify Block 3 structural upgrades, with Ship 39 serving as the first flight article incorporating those changes. Rather than risk uncovering load path weaknesses or margin shortfalls during Ship 39's own cryogenic proof or static fire testing, SpaceX pushed Test Tank 18 through multiple cryogenic load cycles first, generating detailed data on strain response, reinforcement effectiveness, and failure margins. That data is now feeding directly into final adjustments on Ship 39, explaining both the testing delay and the need for scaffolding, since any reinforcements or geometry changes beneath the thermal protection system require tile removal and careful reinstallation. Adding to this picture, another test article, Test Tank SN2, incorporating Block 3 features in the ship's aft section, was transported to Massey's earlier this week. That strongly suggests SpaceX is still refining its structural understanding of the Block 3 design, and that Ship 39 will likely wait until all test results are fully analyzed and incorporated before proceeding to cryogenic proof and static fire. Separately, the installation of scaffolding may indicate tile replacement work itself rather than access for underlying structural modifications. As the first Block 3 flight article, Ship 39 may have revealed tile alignment, fit, or attachment issues during initial inspection, which can arise when thermal protection tiles and their underlying insulation layers are installed over a revised structural configuration. In that case, tiles would need to be removed and reinstalled to correct misalignment, attachment preload, or tolerance stack-up issues in the insulation and mounting layers before cryogenic testing. While the ship side moves cautiously, the super heavy booster for Flight 12 tells a different story. Booster 19 was stacked in a record 28 days and is already being prepared for its own cryogenic proof testing. Most notably, it features the new COPVs with distinctive red casing, the same redesigned units recently installed on Ship 39. These COPVs represent a direct response to the back-to-back -back pressure vessel failures that led to the loss of Ship 36 and Booster 18. Rather than relying solely on supplier qualification data, SpaceX has installed dedicated test bays at Massey's to conduct individual COPV proof testing under flight-like conditions. This allows rack-by-rack -rack validation, early detection of manufacturing defects, and tighter control over pressure margins before integration into flight hardware. Taken together, the pattern is clear. SpaceX is no longer pushing vehicles straight into testing based on schedule pressure alone. Instead, it is deliberately absorbing time up front validating structures, qualifying pressure systems, and closing margin gaps before risking another catastrophic failure. The result is a slower visible pace, but a far more disciplined engineering flow. At Pad 2, work continues at a steady, methodical pace as SpaceX pushes the ground systems closer to operational readiness. The orbital launch mount is now largely complete, and scaffolding around the top deck is being removed as finishing work wraps up section by section. The main remaining hardware yet to be fully installed is the set of protective access doors for the 20 booster hold down clamp arms. These doors close immediately after liftoff to shield the clamp mechanisms from exhaust plume impingement, debris, and extreme thermal loads during engine ignition. On the launch tower, the ship quick disconnect arm has been structurally installed and tied into its fluid, electrical, and control systems. 
at the Sanchez site, the shipside QD interface, which supplies propellants, pressure and gases, electrical power, and data links to the upper stage before liftoff, has already been integrated with the arm extension. Teams are now routing and connecting the flexible cryogenic propellant hoses feeding the QD panel, after which the arm extension and QD mechanism will be mated to the SQD arm on the Pad 2 tower. With installation nearing completion, Pad 2 is expected to enter its testing phase very soon. The tank farm recently completed a long-duration cryogenic test lasting about 18 hours, pointing to a full system checkout rather than a limited validation. During the test, liquid nitrogen flowed through pumps, heat exchangers, valves, and transfer lines, with venting observed at multiple locations, indicating active testing of flow paths, pressure control, and thermal management across the facility. The extended duration suggests SpaceX was validating recent upgrades and new installations from the past several weeks. A new heat exchanger installed shortly afterward indicates further modifications are ongoing, making additional long-duration cryogenic tests likely in the coming weeks. Nearby, demolition work at Pad 1 continues as the site is reconfigured to match the newer Pad 2 layout. After removal of the launch mount legs and water-cooled steel deck plates, crews are excavating soil to expose foundation piles for removal ahead of constructing a Pad 2-style flame trench. Dismantling of the old water deluge system is well advanced. All three large water storage tanks are gone, with the remaining four smaller tanks scheduled next. The high-pressure nitrogen tanks that once forced water from these reservoirs to the water-cooled steel plates during launch have also been removed. Water delivery piping is being dismantled in parallel, clearing the site for the next phase of reconstruction. In a separate update, the Marmac 31 barge was recently spotted delivering a large tank to the Turn Basin at Kennedy Space Center. This barge has now been identified by Kiko Donchev, SpaceX's vice president of launch, as the specific vessel the company will use to transport Starship vehicles and super heavy boosters from Starbase to Florida, marking the first public confirmation of the exact vessel. This transport capability will be used for early Florida-based Starship launches from LC-39A until the Roberts Road facility is fully operational and capable of manufacturing ships and boosters locally. The barge, which will be named You'll Thank Me Later, still requires additional modifications, but the recent tank delivery served as a successful initial shakedown of its transport role. Once fully prepared, SpaceX expects early shipments to consist of a single booster or ship per voyage, with plans to transition to transporting multiple vehicles per trip as operations mature. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. In the closing days of 2025, the European Space Agency found itself grappling with a cybersecurity breach that exposed vulnerabilities in its extended network, underscoring the persistent threats facing even the most technically sophisticated organizations in the space sector. The incident surfaced publicly around December 25th when French cybersecurity researcher Sébastien Latombe reported that internal ESA-related data was being offered for sale online, backed by screenshots showing live access to internal systems rather than a static document leak. The exposed material reportedly included confidential technical documents from Airbus Defense in Space and Thales Alinea Space, along with internal project tracking pages source code repositories, and configuration files used in collaborative engineering environments. Among the leaked files was a 2015 Airbus technical note defining spacecraft coordinate reference frames for the JUICE mission launched by ESA in 2023 to study Jupiter and its icy moons. Screenshots also revealed internal project management pages linked to Ariel, an upcoming space telescope scheduled for launch in 2029, which will study exoplanet atmospheres. On December 26th, a hacker using the alias 888 claimed responsibility on the dark web forum Breach Forums, stating that access to ESA-related systems began around December 18th and remained active for roughly a week. The attacker claimed to have extracted more than 200 gigabytes of data and advertised it as a one-time sale for cryptocurrency, suggesting sustained access rather than a brief intrusion. ESA formally acknowledged the breach on December 30th, describing it as affecting a limited number of external science servers located outside its core corporate network. According to the agency, the impacted systems supported unclassified collaborative research and engineering work, with no evidence of access to classified data, mission-critical infrastructure, or operational spacecraft systems. 
ESA said affected servers were isolated, partners were notified, and forensic analysis of access logs and potential data exposure is ongoing. While ESA characterized the incident as contained, experts cautioned that exposure of live internal systems, source code, and configuration files could enable industrial espionage, reuse of infrastructure by attackers, or indirect compromise of partner organizations. As space agencies rely more on shared digital ecosystems, this incident may accelerate tighter security controls around collaborative engineering platforms that quietly underpin today's space missions. A Soyuz 2.1B rocket lifted off from Vostochny Cosmodrome on December 28th, marking Russia's final orbital launch of the year. The mission was tasked with deploying a pair of Earth observation satellites while carrying a large set of secondary payloads from international partners. All major flight events, including liftoff, ascent, stage separation, and payload fairing jettison, proceeded nominally. Approximately nine and a half minutes into the flight, the Fregat upper stage separated from the launch vehicle and carried the payloads into a sun-synchronous orbit at an altitude of about 550 kilometers, with an inclination near 98 degrees. Payload deployment occurred later in the mission, though those events were not publicly broadcast. The primary payloads consisted of two AS-2T spacecraft, each with a mass of roughly 670 kilograms, designed for high-resolution optical Earth observation. Equipped with dual camera systems, they capture stereoscopic imagery, enabling the generation of detailed three-dimensional terrain models. Flying as a coordinated pair, they improve coverage and data accuracy for monitoring wildfires, floods, volcanic activity, and other environmental changes. Beyond the main payloads, the mission deployed more than 50 secondary satellites, ranging from CubeSats to experimental spacecraft built by Russian institutions, private companies, and international partners. In structure and intent, this mission mirrored the aggregation model used by SpaceX on its Falcon 9 transporter flights to similar sun-synchronous orbits. In both cases, multiple customers share a single launch to reduce costs and increase access to orbit, reflecting a broader industry shift toward high-cadence rideshare missions, rather than bespoke, single-payload launches. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button leave a comment and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.